he was always so well informed uh, about everything having to do with tennis. He was always involved in anything that had anything to do import, of importance in tennis. And it was a great joy to speak with him because he was fervent in his uh, support of whatever he believed in. Sometimes the biggest statements in tennis are made outside the lines. Such is the contribution of Derek Hardwick. But when it comes to taking tennis to new heights of popularity, few have ever accomplished more than this man from Great Britain. It, it's amazing how hard it was to get open tennis started in 1968. And Derek uh, is a true uh, pioneer in that effort to make it happen. And we all are very indebted to him. Along with his integral role in creating open tennis, Hardwick was deeply passionate about doing everything possible to ensure the success of such showcase events as Wimbledon and Davis Cup. I would say he was the German shepherd for protecting the Grand Slams when you know we had the, uh, uh, the Men's Pro Council, which was really the governing body of the sport at the time and Derek represented the Grand Slams, ITF, Davis Cup, very strong advocate for Davis Cup. Uh, good guy, uh, enjoyed uh, um, having some battles with him, but, but you know, never got personal and always the thought of what's best for tennis. And, and that's, how, that's how Derek um, conducted himself in, in the meetings. He strongly believed in, as I said, in the Davis Cup and what the Grand Slams accomplished and uh, he did everything he could to protect him, but he, he really truly cared about the sport. I was on the, the Men's International Professional Tennis Council, which was the ruling body of the game in the mid 80s, and he was representing, he was on the body also, and representing the ITF, and uh, he was the guy that made sure that Davis Cup stayed in the places that it needed to be. So I, I just remember meeting after meeting after meeting with him where we would be attempting to do the calendar, which is the hardest thing to do in professional tennis, is, is make the calendar work. And we do all these discussions, hours and hours and hours, stay up until two or three in the morning trying to get it done. And Derek would sit there not doing anything. And then we would get the calendar kind of done. Then he'd take off his shoe, we'd start banging it on the table, take his shoe, bang it on the table, kind of like Khrushchev did, I think, back in the, in the, in the 60s. And he said, Listen, I'm telling you, Davis Cup is going in these weeks. Bing, bing, bing. You guys can do whatever you want to do, but it's not moving for those weeks. Hardwick's engagement never ceased. All was focused on what would help our sport thrive. Derek Hardwick deserves every bit as much credit as I ever received for his contribution to Open Tennis. They were tired of the, way, the fact that the professionals who were outside barred from the major events were the better players. Ken Rosewell, Rod Laver, Pancho Gonzalez, and on and on. And the so-called amateurs weren't really amateurs. They were getting paid, but they weren't very good. And so Derek and Herman David and Bob Kelleher of the United States, president of the U.S. Tennis Association, made up their minds that they would force open tennis. They would hold an open Wimbledon anybody could play, and if the rest of the world didn't like it, well, try to ban us. His mind was sharp, his scope truly global. By doing so much to ensure the success of tennis, Derek Hardwick has left a legacy we benefit from every day.